But I would like now to welcome our next speaker, so please join me in welcoming to the stage Edi Rama, Prime Minister of Albania. I'm uh, extremely honored to be here today and uh, to have this privilege to address this room. And by the way, I don't remember when for the last time I saw a room where no chair was empty. Yeah, it looks like the Communist Party gathering, but <laughs> thanks God <laughs> it's not. And I'm sure everyone has come here just based on his or her goodwill. Nobody was forced. <laughs> Although EU forces people, you know. And uh, when I was told that I have just five minutes, I was thinking that uh, working with EU, we always had to keep in mind two things. Work hard, speak short. For the first, we have started to deal with and uh, quite successfully for the second we are not yet there so I hope I'll not be as long as to make Ursula think that I'm not worth being invited anymore and uh, coming here and uh, uh, looking at the people and uh, all these uh, uh, personalities invited from all the ways I again thought about Ursula's first tweet as president of the commission when she underlined her ambition that the commission she leads be a geopolitical commission. And I must say that events have uh, helped her in a bad and in a good way because I don't think uh, that uh, any commission before, at least in my memory, has had to deal with such an incredible course of events from the pandemic to the uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine and a few weeks ago to this savagery that we all witnessed in Israel. Uh, on the other hand, I must say that all these events have helped to shape uh, the work of the Commission in a way that has been very, very helpful, especially to them who felt left aside before. And uh, as our African friends might witness, or others might witness, we also can witness. I come from uh, a place named Albania, which is part of a region named the Balkans, the Western Balkans, they say, uh, which is surrounded by the EU border. But we are not EU. We are just EU without you. <laughs> and uh, we have had uh, to live with that like a sense of uh, uh, Segregation, not in the in the terrible uh, way this term uh, appeals to the memory, but in the way that we always felt that we were doomed to be the second-hand citizens of this continent. And this has changed, and it's changing every day. A few days ago, uh, we hosted the European Commission president and many others in Tirana for a summit that would have been out of imagination just a few years ago. A summit that gathered the Western Balkans and uh, uh, leaders from the European Union and the European Union itself to look forward. And uh, we are very happy to see there that uh, uh, the president of the commission expose a very ambitious new plan for this region, which is uh, named uh, the New Growth Plan. And uh, this is really music for our ears. Because yes, reforms are necessary. Because yes, 
further democratization is necessary. Because yes, um, uh, shrining on the values and principles of the European Union is fundamental. But as, as Angela Merkel said once, uh, highways can work properly without democracy. But democracy without highways cannot really work properly. So infrastructure is needed, as President Michael Stahl mentioned before me. And Europe's strength lies in its power to transform politically and economically itself and its neighbors, and I would add its friends. Europe, European Union, by the way, not us yet, is quite, quite a difficult uh, creature to deal with. And you have to have very strong nerves. You have to be really very, very well prepared to not let depression come and get you before you get you. But in the meantime, is a, is a tough love, is a learning curve that you have to go through. And to all of them that sometimes out of uh, disillusion think that there are easy ways in other directions, I must say that in no other direction you will find a friend and an ally that is strong and that will never ever attack you and will never never attack anyone and will always try to help everyone. And this is the European Union. On the other hand, I want to say that the opening we are seeing thanks to this, to this more and more closer relation with the European Union, is fundamental for the future not only of the Western Balkans, but of the European Union itself. And I'm sure that the same goes for our African friends, the same goes for others, that in this relation, for sure, we'll find many reasons to question themselves, is it worth? But on the other hand, there is nothing more worth than getting closer and closer and closer with the European Union. And for us Albanians, that uh, went through a history that has obliged us several unwanted marriages, believe me, that this might be the most difficult marriage to make, but this is the only worth marriage to seek. And I'm telling you also from my personal experience, I have had some failures in marriages, <laughs> but uh, having found the good one and being happy with this one, I always believe that this will happen to Albania and to everyone when finally we'll marry the European Union. <laughs> Thank you very much. And And uh, I, I want to, to, to leave you with one little fact. Because I want you to know that, you know, all my smile, all my love, all my everything for Europe and European Union is unconditional, but it's not stupid. <laughs> and uh, just think that we are, as I said, surrounded by the European Union borders. And our neighbors that are EU get 4,517 euro per capita from EU itself. What we get with the EU without you is just 138 euro per capita. It's a very big gap that we are filling with love we are filling with hope. We are filling with ambition. We are filling with a very, very clear understanding that there is nothing better we can leave behind for our children. But I'm very much hopeful that what the President's Commission and this Commission is trying hard will succeed because at the end, our children 
will have to inherit not just the testament of love, but also the proof that this marriage is the only worth having. Thank you.